Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, <clears throat> my breeder supply. Um, remember, in all these Q and A sessions, I'm not a vet, I'm not a doctor, but I have been around Frenchies for, for for almost a couple of decades, and I am in love with the breed. So hopefully, the information I give you is correct. <clears throat> but uh, certainly, if you're in doubt about it, double check it, Google it. If I've got things wrong, let me know. Okay, so let's have a look here. First question. I have a seven pound chihuahua. I'm using your technique to AI. She's a virgin and she screams. What do I do? Well, so I have AI quite a few uh, chihuahuas over the years and successfully. Um, and the secret to this is, you know, when I AI Frenchies, sometimes, especially a dog that's not familiar with me, and sometimes just the way the dog is, that they are pretty nervous about the whole process and don't like you messing around with their back end. If that's the case, take your time. This thing doesn't have to be done in five minutes. You know, you can take half an hour, an hour, get the dog familiarized with what's going on. So get the dog on your lap, stroke it, play with it, make it feel like it's in a safe place and then start going to work on doing the AI. And uh, you know, if it screams a little bit, you know, what I start with on a small dog is using a little finger to do the first insertion before I put the rod in. Just kind of, you know, muck around with the back end just so she gets familiar with that. And if she's uncomfortable, then stop and start, stop and do that. I mean, I've never had a problem where a dog doesn't eventually calm down, you can get the job done. So I say just take your time. Um, okay, Hayley from the UK. She has a cream dog uh, that the breeder she got it from says it has a copy of chocolate and it has a, a really strong red eye glow in the video and it's KYKY. Okay, well actually, this is not just a cream dog. And she's asking about, by the way, if we breed this to her female, who's a blue, and she gives me the uh, as part of the DNA on that dog, what will I get? Okay, well the first thing is, <clears throat> the male claims that he is a cream. So a cream is little e, little e. And if you remember from previous videos, cream covers everything up. It's like white paint. All the other colors that are present in the dog are completely hidden by the cream. So we don't see the other colors, but we do know the dog has a red eye glow. And a dog with a red eye glow is in fact a chocolate dog. So this is a, um, a chocolate dog covered in cream. And she also says that he is KY, KY, which means he does not have brindle. So that's what we know about the male. The female, she says the female is a blue, and then proceeds to give me the, uh... so it's a blue dog, little D, little D, dilution gene. She says it doesn't have cream. It'd be helpful if I put this underneath each other, I don't. So as best we know, this dog is not chocolate. And the dog has one copy of Brindle, KBKY, and does not, have pied. Okay, so this question she asks is, what happens if I breed these two dogs together? Okay, well, so the first thing is, is we know that this dog is DD, does not carry blue. So what are you gonna get? Well, every puppy is gonna get a copy of dominant D, dominant blue from dad, doesn't have blue, and gets a copy of dilution blue from mum. So that is a blue carrier. So there's the first part. You know, every dog will be a blue carrier. It will not have blue in its phenotype, its physical description. It will not look blue, but in its genotype, it will have a copy of recessive blue. The puppies could produce blue. Okay. Right, let's look at the chocolate. Okay, so the dad gives out a copy of chocolate, which is the recessive gene for chocolate every time, and mum. And by the way, this, I'm not really drawing this the right way, so I'm just going to change that slightly. And the reason for this is, is that the convention says that you put the dominant gene first. So let's just get it right. So the dominant gene in this case is chocolate, married to, that's a not chocolate, married to a chocolate. So again, this dog doesn't show chocolate, but it is a chocolate carrier. So all the puppies will be chocolate carriers, so we know that. Okay. Okay, since this dog does not have pied, we don't know about the other dog, we haven't been told, but since the other dogs have, we're gonna put this down as N, 
question mark. We don't know what the other part is, but here's the deal. Pi, again, is a recessive gene. You have to have two copies for it to be expressed. So this dog will not show pied. So it's going to be a not, all the puppies will be not non-pied. They'll all be not pied, non-pied. We know that. Okay, so the every, really, the next part is the cream. All right, we know that dad uh, has a copy of recessive cream and mum does not. So we know this. We know that about the offspring. So that every dog will have a copy of cream, but will not show it. So they are cream carriers. So we've known quite a bit about these puppies already. So the last part of the equation is this brindling. What's going to happen in the brindling? So we're going to do a Punnett square, just to show you what's going to happen on the brindling. So on the top, we've got the dad. He's KY, KY. And the Punnett square, you do a vertical line splitting it, a horizontal line splitting it. You put the mum down on the side. The mum is KB, KY. She carries one copy of brindle. So now we look and see how these marry up. So KB and KY gives us a dog that has one copy of brindle. Brindle is <coughs> dominant in it. It does not recessive, uh, double recessive that requires it to have two copies to show up. A single copy shows up. So this one over here is a KB, KY. This one here is a KY, KY. And the bottom is a KY, KY. So what do we get? Each one of these Punnett squares represents a quarter of the litter. So a quarter and a quarter, a half of the litter, are no brindle. Uh, you might be going off the screen here, and I apologise. And <clears throat> half the litter will have one copy of brindle. And again, you may not be able to see that, and I apologise for off the side. So what's the answer? Is The answer is, is that we're going to get half... Brindle, half not brindle, which is probably going to be fawn, half fawn. So what are we going to get in this litter? We'd expect to get a litter of half brindles, half fawns, that carry blue, carry chocolate, and carry cream, and not pie. And there we have it. So um, unfortunately, you know, you don't get the advantage of seeing these chocolates and blues and creams, but all the offspring carry it, and all of the offspring could produce interesting dogs in the future. I'm going to do another video on this brindle situation because it's pretty important how brindle works. But anyway, that's, that covered long-winded explanation for that question. So now we'll get this off the board. And let's see if we can talk about another one as I do that. Uh, I love, love, love all your videos. This is Tonya Cooper. Well, thank you, Tonya. She gives us a big thumbs up. Appreciate that. Uh... Hello James, could your next video please ex explain dominant brindle? Yes, it can. I will do a whole video, probably do it today, on exactly what's going on with this brindle because it, it is confusing to people and it is super important to uh, what's going on. I mean, in my opinion, brindle is something that you want to try to avoid in Frenchies. Now, I'm going to get people who are going to say, hey, there's lots of Frenchies that are brindle in the show ring and they're exactly right about that. Um, but the majority of the dogs that I produce and that my customers produce for my stud dogs probably are not ending up in the show ring. And that's not because they're not great dogs, but that is because uh, my customers are typically more interested in, in uh, you know, the blues, the chocolates, the merles, the creams, the fawns. And part of the reason for this is that the, uh, the value of the dogs is considerably less for a brindle dog. And I'm going to get people who are going to call me on this. And they're going to complain, but the fact of the matter is that's just a truth. It is. The, the, anyway, another whole video on that coming up. Okay. Okay, so here's somebody else saying, please explain recessive and dominant genes. Yes, going to do that on that video. That video is going to, going to talk specifically about all of that. Um, How much for the female? Well, the answer to that one is go to my website, www.lovemypups.com. There's puppies on there and videos and everything else. Um. <laughs> LMAO, OMG. Uh, he's, this, this girl, Kimberly, is saying that I said, if I had a bitch here, I would start humping around. And my, hus my husband said, WTF, why are you watching? So she got caught watching one of my videos, heard the, heard the description on the video, and uh, the husband was wondering what the heck she was doing. That's funny. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, uh, I have a two-year-old female. I've attempted to breed her three times. She's an AKC champion. We tried both surgical AI and regular AI. I'm devastated she will not get pregnant. Well, that sucks. I understand that. So, what are the things that can stop a dog getting pregnant? You've, you've bred this dog a few times and it's never had puppies. What is going on? So, let's just talk about the things that can go wrong for you not to have a pregnancy. So, the number one reason that a dog doesn't get pregnant is timing. It's all, you know, you've got to have a healthy dog and you've got to have quality uh, semen being pres presented at the right time. And the right time is a progesterone level of about 15. Of about 15. 20 if you're doing a surgical. And two days before a 15, it'll be a 5, and that is ovulation. Ovulation. And the day after that, it'll be an 8. And the day of AI, it's going to be about a 15, which is going to be about day... 11 through 13. You've got to get your timing right. So what can you do on this? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can do progesterone tests, draw blood, do a progesterone test, find out what the, what the level is in AI at the right time. That's the best way to do it. Uh, the next way to do it is to breed multiple times and try to cover this window of day 11 through 13. By the way, I'm talking about day one. Day one is the, is the first day of seeing blood spots. First day of blood is day one. So, so to get, this is the number one reason you get your timing wrong. Now, that may not be the case for this person. So the second reason is, is technique. You've got to get the technique right for the AI. And I see lots of people who go to a vet to have an AI done, and I'll get a comment from them and say, oh, I'm on the way home with my dog, and she's in a crate like you suggested, but there's a puddle of fluid underneath her. Well, guess what? What you just put in her leaked out. It doesn't do you any good at all. You've got to keep this dog elevated for at least 30 minutes and sometimes as long as an hour. What I do in that AI is I keep the dog elevated with its back up. I've got a video on this. We do the AI. We keep the dog elevated for 30 minutes. We put the dog back on its feet with our hand underneath her. If anything dribbles out, she goes right back to a 45 degree position for the next 10, 15 minutes and we try it again. So that's the second reason is technique. You've got to get the semen to stay inside the dog. If you don't do that, of course, it's not going to work. So this is technique would be the number two failure. It's incorrect technique. And I see, and you know, vets are not bashing vets. Vets know, they have to know a huge amount of information on everything about animals. But they may not be an expert in every single item of this. And specifically, they may not have done very many AIs. So they may, I see lots of vets that will stand the dog up on the table, the dog standing there horizontally. They'll AI the dog and three, four minutes later they're done, they give the dog back. The problem is, because they're rushed and they've got like five other people in the waiting room, maybe somebody came in with a dog that's been hit by a car, they've got to get on with things, they just don't spend the time. If you go to the vet and have your AI done, as soon as the dog's been done, take the dog in your arms and hold it and keep its butt up in the air for another 30 minutes. Sit in the waiting room like that. All right, number three is there's something inherently wrong with the dog. So uh, you can have thyroid conditions and the which can cause this. So what you should do is do um, a CBC, a complete, uh, a complete blood panel. It's like 50 bucks. They draw some blood, they put it through their machine, and they look at all of the significant things to do with blood that tell you potassium and you know, liver functions and you know, thyroid functions. All of those things can be checked, and you can see if there's anything out of whack. And if there is, it's a good chance that that's causing a problem and you can treat it. And I think the other one is is that you'll see dogs occasionally who don't keep their progesterone levels up. If you look at what's going on between day one and day 61, when this dog is gonna have puppies, what happens is the progesterone level is low, it's like less than zero, and after about day five, it goes up to, to a one, and then it's at a five, that takes about you know nine days, and then it goes up pretty rapidly to a 20, which is around day 14. And then it stays up high, and how high it is, it's definitely above a 20. And it stays high right until the very end and it plummets. And this process here is the last few days. The last few days, and that's what, the dropping of the progesterone level is what triggers the welt to start. But what happens to a dog that is 
um, can happen to a dog is that, unbeknownst to you, it's everything looks good and then its progesterone level drops and you lose the puppies. And so what you can do is you can do a progesterone test, pretty inexpensive, and then if it's down here, you just simply give it a shot of progesterone and that brings the progesterone level back up and you may have to do it a couple, three times during the pregnancy. Got to get a vet to do this, talk to your vet about this, but if you're having a dog that consistently will not get pregnant, it may have got pregnant, but its progesterone levels are not high enough to sustain the pregnancy. And so the solution is preg progesterone test, and if it's low, you just get a progesterone shot. Okay. Um, let's see, look at videos. Uh, uh, Okay, so somebody's asking about AKC color registration. Um, okay, so we'll, start, we'll talk about that. So on Frenchies, there are colors that are not showable in the show ring. Blues, chocolates, merles, <clears throat> lilacs. Can't show them in the show ring. And so how do you get those dogs registered? Well, the answer is, is that you can, you can do it two ways. You can, you can always just fill out an AKC registration form and put the closest color you have in there. And the, the colors that are available are not going to be those colors. So it won't show the correct color on the registration form that you get. But that's just a, a letter on a form. It really doesn't matter. The other thing is if you were concerned about it, you want it to look correct, then you can send a picture in with a paper form. You do a paper application. You send a picture of the dog in and you write down what the color of the dog is. And that way you can certainly get blue dogs registered as gray. So you can get that done. Right, I think I spent enough time. Next video is going to be on recessive dominant genes and specifically brindling. Appreciate you looking at my videos. There's lots of them to watch, I know. If we've got things wrong, let us know. If you like it, subscribe to us and tell us that you like it. And if you think we're idiots and we've got things wrong, absolutely let us know. And thank you very much for watching. Bye, everybody.